Greetings Church, this is uh, Kevin DeClaron. Today is uh, Tuesday, June 23rd, 2020. And behind me is the Oregon uh, Convention Center. As you can see it right here, a great place for um, a shepherd's conference or a pastoral ministry. I'm standing right, right now, right in front of the uh, monument of um, Dr. Martin Luther King. And there is something right here that was written down there. I want to read that and um, it says here it's in a, it's an excerpt from a speech that he had given back in August 28th 1963 um, it's the it's the uh, dream speech and uh, you can see here's the the monument there I'm gonna walk around here so you can that's him right there and uh, he's holding on to a, a, a bunch of paperwork probably that was the the speech and uh, there's a little girl there's a here's another person there. Looks like a woman. And uh, right there, right there, and that's another person. And then un underneath there is uh, you can see there's um, this this metal plaque that they have there. There's a looks like Native American Indians um, are on there. And then right there on the ground is the um, the names of uh, the people who I think uh, gave contributions to uh, to be able to erect this here. Looks like there's some fish right there. And um, and there's a bird. Let's see what else. That's pretty much it. There's not a whole lot. Um, you know the, the, the story of Joseph and wheat, how uh, the, the shaft of wheat was uh, put together uh, in his dream and uh, here it is right there and, and next to the city of Rose um, you can see the rest of the uh, convention center here um, behind me it's pretty big it's a it's a huge convention center look all around and uh, this is a ho hotel that was completed I think at the end of last year um, it's a Regency Hyatt Hotel and uh, it goes with the convention center, I believe. Um, and uh, there is a passage of scripture that I want to read. It is uh, coming from 1 Timothy uh, chapter 4, uh, verses 1. I want to read that passage to you. Uh, it says here, uh, this is Paul writing to Timothy, uh, his protege. And this is my uh, Gideon's Bible here. And Paul says, Now the Spirit exp expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, um, giving heed to de deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. So one, they will depart from the faith. Two, uh, they will give uh, heed. In other words, they will pay attention to the deceiving spirits of Satan, those who um, Lucifer had uh, used to stand against God in heaven. And then it says here, and um, they will give heed to the doctrines of demons. Some people believe that um, our beloved uh, preacher here, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, um, basically was led to do that. You know, um, the, the spirit, uh, it says here, why? Because of the fact that he left the Christian church where God sent us out into the world and make disciples of nations to fight for civil rights, which was... Uh, not a Christian cause, but it was a, a, a pagan cause. I think what the people should have done is uh, submitted, repented of, of their sins, turned away from their sins, uh, and followed in the footsteps of Christ. Uh, Dr. King, I think, had, um, had a good idea in what he believed and what he preached. Um, I think this is what he says here. Um, I say to you today, my friends, he says here, all right, I'm going to read it for you. All right, it says here, I say to you today, my friends, that even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a, a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. And this is coming from the Constitution. Uh, all men are created equal. I have a dream. Uh, and endowed by their creator with alienable rights. Uh, it says here, I have a dream that one day 
on the on the red hills of Georgia, sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. He says, I have a dream that one day, even a state sweltering uh, with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, uh, but by the content of their character. I have a dream that one day little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. And um, it says here that the dream represents Dr. Martin Luther King uh, Jr. stepping forward, uh, deliver the message to the world behind and to the right of Dr. King is a young man and so on and so forth. But I, I want to bring the American church back to not the dream, because remember Joseph had dreams and it led him to slavery. Uh, his dreams didn't lead to slavery. His dreams led to his death and to his party. Um, the fact that he wanted Africans uh, to be uh, free, he wanted Africans to be equal to that of the uh, European British American people is all well and good. But I think the root of the issue is sin. The root of the issue is the fall of man. Um, I love the fact that the dream said what it, what it said. Um, I appreciated those kind words and what he stood for. Um, however, I want to remind the American government and the American people that God's issue with us is sin. Um, it's not our dreams, it's not our color, it's not our race, our nationality, it's the sin nature that we, um, that we incurred as a result of Eve listening to the voice of Satan. That is God's dream. That is God's issue with us. Um, all of the evil that has come out of what has happened between, um, between, between the devil and, um, and, and the Lord and all the evil that is inside of each one of us cannot be changed um, by our speeches, our preaching. The only one that can change that is the Holy Spirit of God. And so along with uh, Dr. King's dream, I want to remind the American government and the American people and all of the churches, God is willing to transform and change that. In order for that dream to come true, the American people must repent of their sins. In order for that dream to come to pass, the American people must do what God says, and that is to repent from their sin and to turn away from their sins and to trust in Jesus as Lord. In order for that dream to have any effect on, in American culture, in American history, the people need to repent of their sins. If they don't repent of their sins and take God at his word, then this man died for nothing. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that uh, as they hear Dr. King year after year, as they receive his dream, that the people would not be, um, would not be misled and deceived. So the next African-American uh, pastor, preacher, elder who, um, who wants to stand up for civil rights, let them remember that um, at the heart of it all is that they are dealing with a sinful people, a sinful nation um, that needs to repent of their sins first. If any rights is going to be granted to an American, it has to be within the context of Christianity. It has to be in the context of the love of God and the blood of Christ being shed because without it, Satan is going to have a heyday and will continue to persecute the church and those who stand for its rights. I pray for the African American community that though they stand for what is right, that they would also make their amends with God and that they would make their amends um, through Christ Jesus and receiving His Holy Spirit and repenting of their sins um, before they continue to, to, to charter this, this whole dream effect. Without the Spirit of God within them, this dream will never come to pass. And so I pray for Portland, I pray for Seattle, I pray for the nations of the world who weep with the African American community, but what about those of us that are weeping with God because His glory has been marred. More than the African slave, the glory of our Creator has been marred by Lucifer, his demons, and those who stand with him. So I pray this in the blood of Jesus. Amen.